For some reason, teenagers right now are doing this Tide Pod challenge, essentially because the Tide Pods look like candy. Well, then I have something for you. Because there's a rock that looks just like orange jello. Well, salt, really, but rocks are mostly silica and salt anyways. Let's try to get the color just right. Uh, I shouldn't touch that. And of course, I've already touched that. So. Yeah, well, it's a little cancer on the fingers anyways. This stuff is, uh, well, geologists would know it as lopazite. Chemists, especially the uh, guys who like the IUPAC naming are going to know it as uh, potassium dichromate. Looks like I need a little bit more of it. Woodworkers tend to use the older name, dichromate of potash, or bichromate of potash. They're basically the same thing. Just fucking look at that. Now I'm going to go pour the uh, foam off these. One of them has a little bit more. I mean, I say, I guess one makes a better latte. There we go. For the most part, these are now unrecognizable from each other. And, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how we're going to go about this now, because, um, I sort of Sort of forgot. Sort of forgot which one was which. So yeah, I, I basically have the same glass here, and I looks like I poured off about the same height. Um, just kind of hoping the foam would help me out, but there's actually just a bunch of pieces of sawdust in this one, and there's a few larger chunks in this one, but I'm not really sure which would have came off in this. In what order? And, uh, boy, that's looking really good, though. I mean, look at that. Delicious. So, uh, Russians think they're badass for doing the whole Russian roulette thing with their odds being 1 out 6. Call this the Lopezite Challenge. One in two chance. I get the right one. One in two chance. Fucking mouthwash in the eye. <laughs> that was probably the most toxic part of this whole thing. Fuck, <laughs> that burns. All right, so those of you who actually know chemistry know that that's not what the type of reaction you'd actually have after consuming that. Uh, chromium's going to do an immense amount of neurological damage, and it's, it's not going to present anything like that. 
in, in fact, there are almost no toxins that present that way. Uh, Hollywood <laughs> has presented that kind of stuff for the same reason that I did. It's very easy and visually stimulating, but it's, it's mostly bullshit. Um, one of these, of course, is actually immensely toxic, but there's a, uh, for those who aren't aware, in these type of videos, the, you know, prank, uh, things, especially along the, the absolutely, uh, ridiculous levels that, uh, let's say, like, Filthy Frank has pioneered, uh, there's the obvious safe one off to the side, uh, And I'm going to go back inside, get cleaned up, and then talk a little bit about this. Because there's something that needs to be said about um, the idiots that are doing this. Uh, plenty of other people have been saying other shit about that. But I still want to say, um, I have to give a few comments about the idiots who are doing these types of stupid fucking challenges. As well as what stupid challenges were going on when I was in school. Um... But also, what the hell have we done to society where brightly colored things, which were historically feared, that was historically this warning sign, has somehow become this, ooh, that's, that, that, that looks appealing. Because that... Potassium dichromate is immensely toxic to the point of making lead look like child's play. In case by some chance you were living under a rock or something, the Tide Pod Challenge is this idiotic thing that some people have been doing uh, recently. I'm a little late to the party on covering it, but it was for setting up what I did before as well as doing a little bit of background uh, research and, on the stuff. Um, The Tide Pods, which, you know, are, are white with the little uh, orange and blue capsules also on them. There is this, what at least to me was an obvious joke about how they look like candy. They look like you could eat them. And... Obviously, you can't. It's detergent. It doesn't matter how brightly colored your uh, dish soap is. You're not going to just, like... Now, but some people have been actually stupid enough to put these into their mouths and bite down. And uh, you've got mixed reactions. Some people have been saying that, oh, well, the, the teenagers are idiots. Just, uh, if it kills them, just let it kill them. That's the Darwin Award. And I, I mostly agree with that, but there's some stuff I want to touch on. Um, you have some people who are largely blaming the parents. And That one's tricky, uh, because I can see how it would be pretty quick to assume that the parents didn't really teach the kids about what uh, poisons are and, you know, not to put them in your mouth. Uh, but then the fact that a lot of these people have made it to, say, 16 to 19 years old uh, without having ingested anything that's killed them yet tells me that they probably were taught that and that this is caving to social pressures but then you know did the did the parents then do a good enough job teaching the kids not to cave to social pressures and can you even actually accomplish that and uh, yeah um, some people have been really bitching out at tide pods uh with some ridiculous attempts at class action lawsuits and the like that aren't aren't going to stand up in court at all. Uh, a few of them have actually been dismissed already. And uh Gee, thank you. You going to go on just a little bit over? No, you're going to do that there. 
Um, what I was hoping to bring attention to is this absurd thing in marketing where we make things brightly colored, even though tons of toxic things throughout history and even in modern times are brightly colored naturally. Uh, well, I'm not really from these areas. I, uh, I'm i not going to comment on a huge amount because I don't want to be spreading misinformation. But uh, when you look into like more tropical regions, it's very well... Uh, very well established that like frogs and even a lot of plants that are poisonous have really bright colors as this sort of warning sign. They also happen to be, you know, poisonous or toxic, but that, that they have really bright colors. Of course, that's obviously not a universal thing because when you look at, say, like desert regions, the ones with uh, very poisonous snakes, you don't, you don't actually see that. Um, And then once you get into like really organic stuff, they're almost all reliably white and may or may not be toxic. So it's it's not super established, but it is sort of just this weird thing that uh, that I've noticed. Um, yeah. Not really sure what could be done about that. Um, part of me says, like, well, just dye all the toxic stuff a certain color and then don't use that color for other things. Don't don't ever color candy that. But that that doesn't really hold up all that well because candies are usually dyed based on the fruit that they uh, taste like and there's fruits of every color that really doesn't work out um better labeling of things would make a huge difference and i'm not by any means saying that tide doesn't label their stuff well it's pretty apparent if you look at the packaging that it's bad for you. Uh, less bright and colorful packaging, but then again, you're going to have um, you're going to have some people that don't want to listen to that, and then the whole thing is fucked again. So, yeah, my attitude's more or less just, like, they're dumb enough to actually believe this shit, and they've got what's coming to them. I mentioned some of the stupid shit that uh, happened while I was in school. Um... Uh, Throughout most of it, it wasn't actually that bad. Uh, stupid things more than anything else. Things that, when you really sat down and thought about it, you could never actually accomplish. But that was sort of the that was sort of the joke about it. Um, like the saltine challenge, where you tried to eat uh, six saltines at once without drinking anything. It was horrible. But. You know, you know, unless you choke, and that happens any time. That can can happen any time where you're eating anything. Uh, but unless you choke, there's no safety risk involving something like that. But the senior year, some something rather rather stupid originated the um, the choking challenge, and it was the first time that in my school experiences that I've ever heard about uh, one of these. One of these, what used to be just stupid joke challenges that actually became dangerous, where um, kids that have a friend choke them out, and um, the goal was to see how long you could go before you tapped out. It's obviously, obviously stupid, 
but people did it. People did it. And uh Yeah. Yeah, I, I I just find it really, really hard to be sympathetic in these types of situations at all, just because it's it's so fucking stupid. Like as terrible as it sounds, I'd rather have them uh maim or kill themselves at this point before they're off say, driving regularly, or have the ability to buy firearms or do something con uh, stupid with considerably higher consequences. Because in the grand scheme of things, all the stupid shit you can mess up, accidentally swallowing a part of a Tide Pod is uh, a lot less malicious than the other things that could happen. Well, I guess I should also explain uh, this, there's clearly people who don't get it, both young people who are actually falling for these uh, obvious jokes, but also older people who don't understand the jokes to begin with, and uh, pretty apparent tied uh, it doesn't understand this at all. There's this odd thing about my generation where the humor largely comes from two two main things that you don't really see uh, too much with others, and that's um, the combination of two things that basically have nothing to do with each other. So, laundry detergent and food. As well as presenting one thing with such absurdity that it's obviously a joke, but it's the absurdity of the whole thing that is the joke. That one, the, the absurd humor, you, you can see kind of... Well, I mean, they're both absurd humor, but the... The one taken to an extreme, you can kind of see with some comedians of the previous generation as well. But, uh, yeah. It, ha it must have to do with something from when we were raised up, when we, when we were raised. I have some ideas about it, but I'm not, I'm not too certain yet. But... You know, presents in such absurdities like loving things that are absolutely terrible. Uh, you know, a rather famous YouTuber now, uh, John Tron, basically did tons of that where he was looking, doing <laughs> reviews of sorts of obvious bootleg games. <laughs> and how, how terrible they were was funny. Uh, but then you see other other absurd combinations of things like the Ugandan knuckles, which is terrible. But it's the um, it's how out of place and absurd it is that what makes it funny. But you see all sorts of these things where you have two things that are combined that are really not supposed to be. And um, the Tide Pods and food was exactly that. The joke was that they look like candy, so start presenting them as food, because isn't it absurd how they look like candy? I don't know how <laughs> anyone could have thought that, oh, hey, that actually seems like a good idea, but it happened, apparently. Well, the thing why I say Tide really doesn't didn't understand the um, 
they put out an ad with uh, some big football guy about how uh, these are Tide Pods, these are for doing your laundry, these are not for eating, and if you're about my age, you know exactly what would have started to happen, because the the first obvious way to fuck with that is to switch the word order. Audio editing is not hard to do at all. And so that quickly became, these are Tide Pods, these are for eating, not doing laundry. <laughs> you gotta see this kind of shit coming. You, you've got to. But Now that then, did it took off. It was basically the Streisand effect. And, um, just sort of amazes me how you can have these absolutely massive companies uh, rise up without really having a good grasp of human behavior, which is interesting because marketing is all about pandering to human behavior. But a um, generational differences, I guess they they failed hardcore. Uh, oh, one thing I'd like to address, just because there's some certain people saying this. The um, the locking up of Tide Pods, that's not in response to this. That happened for well before. Uh, for whatever reason, laundry detergent, especially the Tide Pods, are a high theft item. I don't know why. But they were locked up well before this just because it's a high theft item. I don't get it. 